this is the Watch Dog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Lalex LLX-0011. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing this Glycine GL0351. And Greg was wearing my, not mine, but a Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 300. Greg was wearing it because I have to send it back now, and he's sad, and he wants to wear it one last time. I told Grogo that I was taking Mrs. Watchdog to the Buried Manifold concert in Omaha. He's going to sing his big songs, I Bang the Gongs, Looks Like We Hate It, and I Can't Force Choke Without You. All right, let's take a look at the watch. This is an ultra affordable watch. Comes in a box. And here it is. Yes, this is an homage to the 62 Mass. And let me get the bezel lined up again because for some reason it got out of alignment and let me get the hands out of the way so you can see the bottom all right there it is this is the first lalex on my channel lalex makes ultra affordable quartz homage watches this is homage to the seiko 62 match which was the first professional dive watch to come out of japan there's nothing professional about this 30 meter dive style watch but it does look nice considering the price this watch comes in two colorways. You have the blue that I chose, which seems more like a gray with a slight blue tint to it. If you don't like that one, there's also a black dial. The watch is 40.3 millimeters at the bezel, 46.3 millimeters lug to lug with inverted end links. It's 14.3 millimeters thick, which is really thick for a quartz watch, but a lot of it has to do with this case back. Has a 20 millimeter lug width, which tapers down to 18 at the clasp and weighs 116 grams on the supplied hollow bracelet with one link removed. The bezel is a 60 click unidirectional. The action's mushy, not good, but not horrible. There is back play though, but I've seen a lot worse on these ultra affordable watches. I don't know what the insert's made of, but it's not ceramic. It's tempting to say aluminum, because usually if it's not ceramic, it's aluminum, but this is a $10 watch, so I don't even know about that. Then we have the dial. The dial has a nice sunburst effect. Actually, the dial is not bad, considering the price of this watch. Then we have the minute markers on the chapter ring. Then we have the indices. And then it says Lalex Original on the top. And of course, there's nothing original about this. And then on the bottom, it says Classic Sweeping. Because this has a four tick a second hand. So it's sweeping. Then we have the fence post minute and hour hand. And then there's a rectangle at the end of the second hand. And I got the minute hand in the way of the date. And there's a date with no border, no cyclops. And it's a pretty small date. But it's nice that we have a fast ticking quartz watch with a date because anything with the Seiko BH31 does not have a date. So a lot of the fast ticking quartz watches use the BH31 so they don't have dates. Then we have a unsigned push pull crown. And even though the crown action scene is pretty loose, when I go to set it, as long as you don't move it when you're pushing it in, it won't jump on you. So that's good. You can set it accurately. You just have to be really careful. Then we have the crystal. The crystal is just flat mineral glass. You're not going to get sapphire at this price. And then we have the case. The case is a chrome plated alloy. And not all chrome plated alloys are created equal, but this one doesn't feel cheap. It seems fairly good. And the case itself is not thick. It's only, the watch is just thick because of this huge case back. Speaking of the case back, if you look at it, it does say Lalex, but look at that. That looks like the logo or the Tamaguchi Wave that Seiko likes to use. Now, since the Tamaguchi Wave comes from a famous painting that's in the public domain, I don't know if Seiko can trademark this little symbol or not but if they do then this is a little bit of shouldn't be doing that kind of thing then it also says divers with the apostrophe s so this is obviously not a divers watch this is not iso 6425 certified 
And then it says 200 meters. No, this is a 30 meter watch. And then it says sapphire crystal. No, this does not have a sapphire crystal. So this case back is all a bunch of lies. Plus the case back, even though it seems very well built, is really thick. And so that adds a ton of thickness to this quartz watch, which shouldn't need to be this thick because it's quartz. Underneath the case back is the Sunin SP28 quartz movement that ticks four times a second. This has no jewels. And I don't know how long the battery is going to last because I've never had one of these long term. But then again, it's easy enough to take the case back off. Oh, I forgot to mention too, these notches are fake. This is a pry off case back and here's the slot for it right there. Then we have the bracelet. The bracelet is not very good. At least we do have inverted end links, even though they're hollow. And yeah, it's hollow, not very well done. We do have push pins. And then we have the clasp. The clasp is just awful. It doesn't line up very well when you go to press it in. And you got to play with it a lot to get it to snap and it does have three holes of micro adjust though so at least it's got that a lot of these uh watches in this price range don't even have that but if you do buy this watch the first thing you need to do is get a new clasp it's 18 millimeters plus that would uh, give you a little bit more length to it too because i only removed one link on this bracelet and it's a little tight with one link removed Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. Yeah, it looks nice, but look how chunky it is. It's just a very thick watch. Plus, it's a little tight on me. I removed one link, but at first I removed no links and just pushed it in all the micro adjust and it was just too loose there. So I'd rather have a watch a little tight than too loose. And so just a little tight on me. Here's the watch on my Vario Italian leather strap. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, if you get this watch, ditch the bracelet. It's just not very good. Put it on the strap. And here's the watch on a black leather Raleigh strap. I think that looks pretty good too. Usually too, when I think 62 mass, I think strap and not bracelet. Here we are in the Loom room. The history of these AliExpress $10 watches is the Loom is going to be horrible, but we're going to test it anyway because that's what we do. As we speed up the time, the Loom pip and the indices fade almost immediately. The hands are much better, but still not good. So after a little bit while, the hands are going to fade too. But I have seen worse Loom than this. What do I like about this watch? Well, it is a fast ticking quartz watch with a date. It looks decent enough for the money. And I do like this case. What are my gripes and groans? The clasp is horrible. The loom pip doesn't keep up with the hands. And this case back is full of lies and makes it really thick for a quartz watch. Do I recommend this watch? Well, if you can get it for 10 bucks, sure. But just put it on a different strap, put it on a Tropic or something, either that or get a different clasp for this bracelet. The bracelet's not near as bad as the clasp. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Lalex LLX-0011, and I will be back with another review. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel, and if you like this watch, be sure to use my affiliate link, and I will get a tiny, tiny commission. Bye.